They're small fish, only about 14 inches long. But Atlantic herring play a critical role in the ocean as a major food source for a wide range of larger marine species, from cod to tuna and whales. Historically, herring have been found in great abundance along the New England coast, in the Gulf of Maine and George's Bank. Starting in the mid-1990s, a new fleet of large industrial boats called midwater trawlers began fishing heavily for herring using new methods. Midwater trawls are some of the most efficient gear in the ocean. Basically, two boats, generally over 100 feet long, will tow a net in between them. Now, the net is as wide as a football field is. The National Marine Fisheries Service says herring stocks are stable overall. But there are signs of depletion of herring close to shore, as well as negative impacts on marine species that feed on them. Growing up, you could walk on them, and guys would scoop them up with nets for bass fishing, and they'd literally break the handles on their nets, they'd get so many. And the harbor would just be chock-a-block full, and now there's just nothing. I mean, it was went to the point where we'd set our bait nets and we'd catch too much heron to, the, to a point where we, we set our bait nets and couldn't catch any heron and had to set them six or seven times a day. Midwater trawlers average 150 feet long, use sonar equipment to locate fish, and can hold up to a million pounds of catch. At the docks, large pumps vacuum the fish out of the holes. And you'll have 10 or 12 boats basically fishing up and down in a row, marching back and forth across like a plow or like um, a lawnmower or more like 10 lawnmowers, all in unison. They may take an entire school, and so there's, there's nothing left of the school in that particular area. Herring is the bottom of the food chain. It's what everything feeds on that we fish for. And since they've taken it out of the picture, the, the bass have lost weight, the tuna fish don't come here anymore, and the tuna fish have actually lost weight too. I mean, you don't see the fish in shore anymore. It's changed the whole patterns of everything. Scientists also worry that large numbers of other marine species are being caught and killed in the nets. Here, a large pod of pilot whales are feeding on herring close to nets, even on top of them. Because the nets are so heavy, they're pursed up very tight to be pulled back into the boat, often crushing and killing the fish inside them. A lot of things other than herring was being caught. Marine mammals, fin fish, managed species, ground fish, haddock. And when they make a mistake, it's humongous. It's not, it's not a couple hundred pounds of fish, it's hundreds of thousands of pounds of fish. If you have 30,000 pounds of juvenile fish, eventually those fish are gonna grow and you may be throwing over 300,000 pounds of what would be adult fish. Midwater trawlers fish within quota limits set by the government. And available data on possible overfishing and harmful effects on local marine ecology are still inconclusive. One reason is that these fish are small and hard to track. But there is sea sampling, not as much as we'd like. And with a fishery like this where catches can be 100, 200,000 pounds at a time, you need a lot of observers to know what's really going on. The National Marine Fishery Service uh, was putting a lot of observers on board these boats, but uh, recently the funding has been cut for that program, so we're seeing less and less and uh, consequently less data to work with. Federal fisheries authorities are now considering a proposal to ban midwater trawlers from fishing the inshore waters of the Gulf of Maine during the summer months, when herring stocks are thought to be the most vulnerable. Commercial fishermen say it's unnecessary. It's a travesty to eliminate these fishermen and their vessels from this fishery that is under-harvested by more than 50 percent. We don't feel it's justified and um, we have a healthy resource and we'd like to continue fishing. If the midwater fleet were moved to the offshore areas, it would increase the steaming time by probably three or four times, which increases their fuel consumption. It could increase their bycatch interaction with some of the ground fish species. Others say without enough data, it's too risky not to set some restrictions now to protect local herring stocks. Let's just be cautious. And you're not depriving the boats. They have another place to fish. A decision on these trawlers' rights to fish close to shore is expected before the end of the year. In these coastal communities, there's a lot at stake for these fishermen. They also depend on herring at the bottom of their food chain. For Assignment Earth, I'm Gary Stryker.